One of the most discussed issues in our society today is the issue of justice. Many people are aggrieved, but they don't know how to get justice. While some are frustrated with the long adjournments in the court, others don't have the money to pursue justice when they feel cheated. In the middle of all of this, uh, the Justice Court program sprang up and started showing on major television channels. But joining me now is Justice, Justice's Court Judge Fumi uh, Ashaolu. She is here to talk to us about uh, this uh, Justice Court reality TV show and how it has progressed over the time. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, there is no doubt that uh, the viewers of the show find it very educative and entertaining, I must say. Yeah, your followership on uh, the various platform is fast rising. And uh, one would happily believe that uh, the program just started airing a year ago. Yes, yes. Tell us about the impact uh, the Justice Court has made. Well, so far, um, I'll say that most people that come to Justice Courts they always get very speedy trial mm. and they get their matter resolved on time. Justice court is an ideal process. There's alternative dispute resolution, small claim, civil courts. And it teaches the viewers, they get to know about the legal impact of every action they take. Mm. It is educative. And it gives opportunity to people that cannot afford the regular services of a lawyer mm. or the, the running away from the intricacies of the traditional courts. Mm. So they come in to us. Wow. But uh, people say nothing is <laughs> free in Freetown, actually. Mm. Uh, but how do you admit cases and how much does it cost for people to bring their matters to justice court? Well, nothing is free, true, but really it, the executive producer has been the one bearing the cost. Um, that's the production team. And, um, but for the litigants, that's the plaintiff and the defendants. They don't have to pay a dime. It's free. Just come. You, you come just, with a case. Yeah, there's a procedure for that. Right. We have a website, www.thejusticecourt.com. Most times we encourage them to submit their cases online. Then the legal team investigates, reach out to them, request for evidence, and thereafter they, there's a process that they pass it to the courts. Mm. So that's the way it goes, but they don't have to pay. They don't pay anything. At all? At all, no, not a dime. Hmm. I'm sure a lot of persons who are seeking accelerated hearings to their cases might begin to to this line as they are watching but then in some of your court uh, sessions you even offer to help uh, and empower some of uh, the litigants in distress this this is quite unique and good <coughs> I must say but what is the motivation for this what is the basis hmm. when the parties appear at the courts there are some of them the true bad choices they've made. They discover that they find themselves in a pitiable condition. And at such instance, the court step in. Mm. And that's when the judge decide to assist from the court's pocket. Too. Mm. Yes. But over time, even after the matter is completed, we have good Samaritans reaching out to us from all over the world. They assist some of the litigants to sort out their indebtedness. They help them to pay up. And they do, at times, they empower them as well. Hmm. So that's been it. You have been talking about from the court's pocket, the production team's pocket. Are we saying that? No, not, there's no form of subvention from government, mm -hmm. nothing. I mean, how do you really fund uh, if, this? If, if government comes in, we really appreciate that. <laughs> but so far, no, nothing from the government, nothing. And um, along the line, the production company, Navonis Media Production, 
they've had some sponsors that reach out to them towards partnering. Mm. They've been deliberate over it, but it's still open. Why have they been deliberate? Um, they're working out the, the structure has not really been perfect so far, mm. but they're still working on it. Are there concerns with regards to the independence of the Justice Court? Is that a major problem? Not really about just about the independence of the Justice Court, but we want to, right now, what we have is a free and fair proceedings. Mm. And we don't really want anybody bringing in conditions towards making the parties have a free and fair justice. That's the ultimate plan. Okay. So when we have any condition that is going to negate that, we're not really open to it. So what are the challenges perhaps uh, the Justice Court has, you know, faced financially? Are there any challenges? Because uh, like you have said, everything needs funding as it is right now yes, in our please. society. So what challenges have been faced financially by this program? Um, so far, we, we, that, like I just said, um, some sponsors came forward, but we're still working on it. If we get a team that we can work with, we're open to it. Yeah, besides that, nothing yeah. else? No, nothing, nothing. Right not now. run into troubles with regards no, to funds? No, no, not so far. We've been coping. But of course, we don't know how far we can go on our own hmm. without the support from sponsors. That's a threat to, to, to the whole that, uh, that, plan, the truth, yes. sure, so at, at the end of the day. Go, yeah. Right. Now, your court sessions uh, are held in Lagos. Uh, are you planning on getting uh, other areas to coming? And then have you been getting cases from other states? Are we looking to seeing how you can collaborate with states, perhaps? Um, right now, even though the court sits in Lagos, yes. but we cover the whole of Nigeria, oh. even outside Nigeria. Right. Yeah, some of the cases, we had somebody, a plaintiff that came in from Kotonu to appear before the courts, and she was able to obtain justice. Um, another funny one, we had an American that called on us uh, to take up another American. We do need this, we do. Mm. We do, we do. In fact, um, very soon, in the next few weeks, we're going to have some cases um, that are being done, that will be done online. I'm talking about the court proceeding that will be taken online. Mm. Uh, we have some litigants abroad that want to take up people in Nigeria. So we do that. So we're just going into that as well. Okay. Now, how do you enforce uh, judgments from your courts? Yeah, from your court? okay. Like I said, don't lean too much. Okay. Mm. Like I said earlier on, is an alternative dispute resolution, mm. small claim, civil cuts. And by that, the parties are open to having the judgment binding on them from the onset. Mm. And um, before they even appear before us, the legal team makes sure that if they already have a case, if the matter they want to bring before us is already before the regular court, they have to withdraw that matter from there. Then we get the, we give the judgment in the courts, they comply, and if any party defaults, then they come back to the court again to repose and we take further step on that. Mm. So you haven't had any case where you have had to perhaps bring in the police to take no, these cases no, further? No. How, do, how do you ensure that uh, issues are resolved amicably? Um, on the show, that's right in the courtroom, the judge always makes sure the opportunity is given to the parties to resolve right there. So they work out an arrangement of how they want to offset their indebtedness and the other party, when, once they agree, at times we allow, I step down at times, allow them to go and work it out with the legal team. Then they come back in to the courtroom to give us the pattern of how they have agreed to offset the loan. And like I said earlier on, most cases, we have good Samaritans 
that reach out to the court, to the legal team, even to me directly, they pick the person they want to assist and they request for their details. So they assist them to pay off their debt too. Mm. So, so far, so good. We've not that had helps that resolve cases yes, we've quickly not really have that because challenge. unlike the regular courts, we, we do not have that. Mm -hmm. And so, and a lot of persons like we're discussing behind the scene want their cases resolved mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. So has there been any case that you felt this is quite uh, a tough nut to crack? Not quite, but um, I only refer to matrimonial matters. On, with regards to matrimonial matters, at times, issue of domestic violence do come up mm. when they narrate their case. And because justice court is a civil matter, is a civil court, and domestic violence is a criminal matter. Mm. So what we try to do is handle the civil aspects, then the legal team advise on the domestic violence and the step to be taken thereafter. Mm. So most cases, that's when we have issues. But all in all, at least less than 98 percent of them, by the time they go for the anger management classes and the marriage counseling that the court normally recommend, even though the bill is picked by the, the court. Exactly. So we've always had um, positive results. Right. So which has been the most interesting one for you to rule on? There uh, must be that one. <laughs> there must be that one. Yeah, it has, it's very touching. It has to do with a father and a son. Um, the father, it is something year old that brought the son to the courtroom. Mm. Um, the man could not even work properly were able to resolve the matter and um, the son awarded the sum of 200 mil 20 million naira against the son to pay to the dad and, wow. he and he paid up and after paying up I followed up to try and see that the relationship between them hmm. gets better so I think that's the most touching case I think I've... Because I can see you've been quite emotional yeah, with regards sure. to Yeah, sure. It's very, very touching. Story. Yeah, it's a very so touching. So you, you follow up sometimes? Sure, we do. We do. Now... In fact, some of the cases that we did last year, uh, we brought back some of the parties, the litigants, this year. Okay. To come and appreciate people that give them money, that empower them. Mm. And they're all on YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now... We must come to the point where we need to understand um, what it's inspired uh, the decision to come up with this reality show in the first place, the Justice Court reality show. Uh, first of all, it has to do with um, the conjecture at the traditional courts. Right. And worldwide right now, ADL, that's Alternative Dispute Resolution, is a welcome idea in order to assist the courtroom in the congesting the cost list. Mm. So that's first. Then secondly, it has to do with social justice too. And at the same time, the legal education. Because when people know what to do, then they don't run into trouble. Right? Sure. So a lot of people don't know, and ignorance of the law is no excuse under the law. Mm. So people need to know what to do and what not to do. And so far, you would say that um, a lot of persons have been enlightened oh, as sure. a result of the show. Definitely. They do pass comments on YouTube and on our social media, mm. and those saying that they learn so much from the court process, and um, they know how to handle a lot of these breach of contracts cases that we've done. We have some on breach of trust, tenancy matters, and so on. Mm. They said it's been very edu educative. But, but have you also gotten a uh, feedback on people thinking it's a reality show, so whatever is happening there is not real? Yes, at the early stage, a lot of people thought it was a scripted proceeding. 
But we've passed that stage now. They've come to realize that there are real cases, true life cases, mm -hmm. and the judgment is binding. It's not a play, it's not a drama. It's not a drama at all. They've come to realize that. When you started out, what, was it challenging to get these cases? I mean, how did people be, get to know that there was a program called uh, the Justice Court Reality TV Show? Yeah, we had adverts on TV. Oh, right. Right, right. So, so far, what has your experience been in handling and resolving disputes since the inception oh, of the show? Fantastic. Right? <laughs> fantastic, yeah. Um, it's been very interesting because you come across several cases, situations, mm. some very emotional, some with their self entitlements, spirit, exactly, spirit. So you have to correct that. And there were some of them when you give them money from the even from the court's pockets, it's difficult for them, for them to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then we keep going. Uh, that's the, that's, <laughs> that's the reason why you're there in the first place. Mm -hmm. But then there is no doubt that the Justice Show has uh, been a huge success so far. Thank you. What are your plans to build on this going forward? Um, so far, the production team has been putting in a lot of efforts to make sure that um, our goals are achieved. And there's no alternative way to succeed and putting in more efforts and to make sure that we keep doing what we're doing in a better way. We mm. keep improving on it. That's it. And funding too. We're waiting for funding. <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting, we're calling on people to fund us, to support us mm. worldwide, wherever. We're waiting. We hope they come forward. But you mentioned something that uh, I'd like for us to talk about. You talked about the fact that uh, because of uh, the ch challenges with administering justice at the traditional court, uh, that ADR is the way to go. But for those watching who might want to go this way, how can they go about it? If, do you just wake up and begin to have... Must it be a reality show in the first place? And then, must you just, do you just wake up and just say, you know what, I'm going to have an ADR and that's it? What's the process? Are you talking about the litigants? No. Or from our own side? From your own side. How, own do you, side. how do you be, come up with an ADR mm. such that, uh, because you are not having the support of government now, it's a standalone thing. Mm. Can anybody just begin this? First, you must be a lawyer, definitely. <laughs> yes, you have to be a lawyer then I'll tell you, to be able to do this, you have to have the passion for it, first of all. Because it's not really an easy task. It's not an easy task. Especially when you're just starting off. Mm. I told you yes. that at the early stage, a lot of people didn't even believe there are real cases. Right. And they believe um, it's scripted, you know. But over time, we're able to gain their confidence. And once they realize the benefit of it, they embrace it, mm. and which is what has happened. And um, it's mostly about social justice. There are a lot of people out there that do not have access to justice. Um, there are a lot of ADR outfits, even there? in Nigeria. Yes. Even the courts, the regular courts, encourages mediation. Wow. I'm just realizing Before that. coming to court. Even legal state, legal states, at the legal yeah. state, yeah. yeah. They refer cases there. After mediation, then you come to the courts. Mm. So... Um, it's all over. It's all over. There are so many platforms in Nigeria now towards that. So, and basically, mostly, is to give people easy access to justice mm. and to assist them to have a speedy 
resolution or to resolve their cases. You know, the, it is said that um, this is the last hope of the common man. So as quickly as it is done, a lot of persons would live at peace with not just themselves, but um, <coughs> the people around them. And mm. like you have rightly pointed out, perhaps a lot of persons need to come to the level of awareness that there are alternatives to these things using the ADR because some persons are not aware of it. They go to the traditional court. The cases are dragging for years. And so they, they are not happy with what it is. But with you saying this, uh, I think it's something that a lot of persons would look into. Mm -hmm. But then again, let's look at the aspect of support from family. That's also a huge one. What is it like for you? Support from the family mm. to handle this. Yes, to do this because it's something you say you're passionate about. Yes. Um, oh, everybody that grew up with me knows where my passion had always been. It's always been towards this, always, all my life. Mm. Even with practice, I do take a lot of pro bono cases. There's free cases that you do. Mm. You handle. Yes, yes. I used to visit the prison to assist the detainees there, you know. And I've always had foundations where I try to empower people too. Wow. I belong to clubs where we have, um, we have rehab center. Rehab center as well, my club, you know. That's always been my disposition your passion all my life yeah. mm. towards empowerment social justice and assisting people generally and so it was not uh, anything it new comes naturally when, to when <laughs> they saw you towing <laughs> at this spot what do you have collaboration with because you talked about empowering some of the litigants you talked about sending them uh, to anger management classes and all marriage counseling marriage counseling mm -hmm. Are there collaboration with all of these bodies, or is it still we, from we pay, within? We pay. We, we get professionals and we pay for it. Mm. We send them there and we pay for it. Right. That's what we do. And you're not looking to collaborate with some of these people? If we have people that are ready to work with us, we'll be very happy. Uh, that that we'll would be, be nice. We'll be very happy to have them on board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I guess that will be a fine place mm. to leave it, except you have a final word uh, with regards to the Justice Court. Well, Justice Court, well, I just, I would like our viewers, I'd love to thank everybody. Mm. And um, we look forward to having people on board to support us and take us to greater heights so that we can impact more mm. on the populace. <laughs> And that would be it. Thank you so much. Uh, Justice's Court Judge Fumi Ashaolu, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.